Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be in the cut flower garden and we are going to be talking about dahlias, which is probably one of my favorite things to talk about ever. I could talk all day, every day to a wall. I don't care. I love talking about dahlias so much. So I wanted to give you a tour of all of the varieties that we have, but, but there's a little bit of a situation going on right now because I have a lot of dahlias that I, I didn't order and so I'm, I'm having a hard time labeling them. I have three notebooks, I have my computer, I have an iPad and I track everything like a crazy person because I am a data analyst, that is my nine to five. And so data to me is very important and accurate data is very important. So I am having a little bit of a, of a problem trying to identify some of these. Maybe there are gonna be some varieties that you know um, and that you've grown that you can identify today. But what I wanted to do is walk around. I wanted to show you all of our dahlias, the ones that we have labeled, I'm gonna read them out to you guys. And then the ones that we don't, I will also call those out. And then I wanted to show you some beautiful varieties that I think really stand out that I highly recommend they're performing really well for me and some that I think would be really great in the landscape. So let's just jump right in. So this is probably not gonna show up well on camera, but I wanted to show you, I keep a very neat list, this is one of them, of all of our dahlias. And then I have my three notebooks that I just do like a rough, just kind of a rough uh, inventory of all of our varieties. Oh, here's the sheet I was looking for. Anyways, we have, you know, all of these just kind of like a rough sketch or layout of the varieties that we have. And then this is how I kind of go back and label all of our dahlias. However, like I mentioned, we are having a hard time <laughs> with some of these. So in total, we've planted just a little over 400 varieties and we have four beds over here that we're gonna go through today. I have a lot of other ones in the landscape that are not blooming yet. Dahlias are really late this year. I don't know if they're late for you guys, but they've just been taking their sweet time. Um, and that's just kind of the name of the game. Every year it's a little bit different, but I've talked to several local farms, a couple that we're gonna be going to here soon. So keep an eye out for those videos. Um, those, they're just taking really long. I think there's one farm in particular in Washington and we're, I was just talking to him the other day and he mentioned that his blooms were like three, three and a half weeks late, which is pretty, pretty, it's pretty big to be that late. So there's some in here that haven't bloomed yet. There's some varieties that I'm really excited to see for the first time, but they haven't bloomed yet. And what we'll do is we'll do another video at some point to show all of the varieties that I didn't get to show you today and the nameless ones that I don't get to uh, share with you today. So anyways, let's start out in this bed right here. So right down here is a really beautiful water lily. This is Kelgai Ann, and this is my first time growing her. She's really pretty. I will say she's not a big producer and I've also heard she doesn't produce the best tubers. However, she is one of those unicorn varieties that is hard to get your hands on. So I'm really happy that I was able to get her this year. Right over here, we have Cinder Rose, K.A. Cinder Rose. She is new this year and she is absolutely beautiful. This variety was bred by Christine Albright. And if you know, she just has the most beautiful varieties. I admire her. She's just one of the people that I look up to and I learn a lot from. She's amazing and she just has the most beautiful dahlias that she breeds. This one was surprisingly, like it produced so many dahlias so far. This is one plant, but I am constantly cutting from this one. It has more of a yellowy and a lavender dusting. Some people are seeing more lavender in theirs. I'm seeing more yellow in mine, but this is definitely one I recommend if you can get your hands on it. I love this dahlia so much right down here now this one is funny because this one was actually one that sergey was really excited about this is hepat old charm and i i remember wanting to get it probably two years ago and i tried and i tried and i could not get it but i finally got it <laughs> and it's actually really beautiful I i'm no yeah okay you finally got it it's really beautiful. I, I like it a lot. However, it's pulling in a lot more yellow and I was hoping for it to be more pink. 
Um, so I don't know, I, I like it because I love water lily forms and I think those are like the biggest, most popular forms right now or one of the forms that a lot of people are talking about is water lily because they kind of look like a peony, which is really cool. So I like it, I don't love it, but will I grow more of it? Absolutely, I will. Right over here is Sweet Nathalie and this one is one of the ones I recommend everybody grow. She is beautiful, a creamy white with the lavender center. She's been around for a long time. And I don't know, I just think it's such a beautiful dahlia. Very delicate, very sweet. I probably wouldn't have this in the landscape, but I do think she makes a beautiful cut flower. And right down here below her is 20th Avenue Memory. And this dahlia is new to me this year. And I think it's really pretty. Again, it's kind of got that creamy, um, creamy white with very light pink and just kind of little strokes of purple on the petals. It's really stunning. Actually, these two are the same variety. So you can see this is what it starts out with. It's a little bit smaller. And then this one is a little bit more aged. So you can kind of see that variation of where they start and how they look as they continue blooming. This one is an unknown. <laughs> Here is our first unknown. Um, first of many. <laughs> yeah, first of many. This isn't a great example because it's kind of blown out. I think I might know what she is. And if I do, I will, I'll, I'm going to go back to my list uh, that I've been doing some research on. And I'll put up the name on the screen of ones that I think I might know the name of. But it's a very, very beautiful dahlia. I'm very excited about it but it's just not one that I have a receipt for. So I don't know, but I like her. Right down here is Bloom Quest Compare. Also just a stunning Dahlia. I highly recommend this one as well. It was a little bit slow to take off. It does have powdery mildew, which is fine. I, it's that time and I'm gonna spray them, so I'm not concerned. What I like about it is it's ruffly. I think this is a decorative dahlia, I'm pretty sure. But I love, right before they open, they just have these like streaks of lavender again. I'm just really into the, the lavender whites this year. I like this one a lot. This one is labeled Quite Splendor. It looks a little bit different than, um, than the pictures that I saw. It's creamier on the center and then the outer petals are a light purple, but so far I like it. Sorry, I'm getting rid of a bug. Right over here, we come into our Skipley Moon Glow, which I 100% am not convinced that this is the Skipley Moon Glow. This to me, <laughs> it looks a lot more lavender and peachy than what it's supposed to be. In fact, it almost looks like a cinder rose. I'm gonna have to do a little bit more investigating on this one. Okay, right over here is Clearview Peachy, and I love her so much. Very tall, very good stems. It kind of opens up, let's see, maybe, can you see that? You see how it kind of opens up with a little yellow, a little touch of pink and lavender in the center? And then as it ages and opens up, this is how it starts looking. Let me swap spots here with Sergey. But here it is kind of open. This one is pretty spent. I wouldn't cut at this point. I would probably cut right here at this stage. Maybe one more day when the petals just open up a little bit more and I would just take this whole thing as a cutting. Very, very good producer. I'm very happy about it. We have a couple over here and then one more in another bed, but this is also clear view peachy. Now that's clear view peachy. And now this one here is 20th Avenue softer peach. So it's a little bit different. You can definitely tell in the length of the dahlias and the color. I think this one pulls in a little bit more pink and yellow where that one, it's a little bit more on the purpley yellow side. This one is just a little bit warmer in my opinion very happy with this one these both are the uh, 20th avenue softer peach and they've been great they've been producing like crazy i'm constantly cutting on this one i highly recommend this one 
Okay, I don't wanna to take too long because I know I'm gonna be here for hours if I allow myself. Right here, we have Rock Run Ashley. Very popular, she's very beautiful on the shorter side. But again, warmer, purpley, lavender tones with a little bit of that yellow in the center. Right over here, we have a really popular one. This one is Labyrinth. I think most people are familiar with this one. It has dark stems. I actually love this one for the landscape because the leaves are very interesting to me. And when I'm planting dahlias in the landscape, I always pinch into, I pay attention to the whole plant, not just the actual flower, because that kind of helps me determine if I'm gonna put it out there or if I'm gonna keep it as just a cut flower, but very pretty. Right here is a beautiful dahlia called Omega. Now, this is a dinner plate variety, I'm pretty sure, and I like it. I actually love it. I would, I don't always reach for it in a cut flower arrangement, but I do like to have it on its own. So what I've been doing lately is just cutting it and putting it in a big vase and just enjoying them by themselves, just because whenever you design with these bigger flowers, they kind of steal the show. So if you want them to be like the show in that bouquet, great. But if you have other dahlias that you're designing with, I typically like to go for the ball varieties. This kind of steals the show a little bit, but I do think it's so beautiful. I think this would be beautiful in the landscape. I'm definitely going to divide these and have more of them because I'd like to plant them throughout our whole garden. I love Omega so much. Now over here, we have some, uh, some that haven't bloomed. We have one that died. That's kind of been happening this year. Um, we have Lark's EB here, which, let me just turn her little head to you. It's a very beautiful dahlia. It's yellow with kind of like a pink outline on each of the petals. This one is blown out, so it's kind of hard to appreciate it. But it's a beautiful dahlia. I love the size of it. This one here is called Crazy for Wiley Quinn, which I thought it'd be a little bit more pink, but it's a little bit more orange so I'm gonna just turn the head a little bit for you to see but it is a really pretty dahlia I will be growing more of her this year again we have another rock run Ashley and who do we have here we have sheer heaven down here which I should have known because I've grown this one several times sheer heaven is just a beautiful dahlia water lily and it's just very delicate very pretty doesn't have a lot of blooms on it, but the plant is nice and strong and sturdy. Right here is Irish Ruffles, which I, <laughs> I, it does not look like the pictures and it's new to me, but the Irish Ruffle that I was hoping to have, and I have one more in another bed, it has a little bit of a kind of like a brush of a lavender. And this one is just blooming very, very white. I like the shape, I like the form, but I don't love the color. If I want white, I mean, if I was looking for just a white dahlia, this would, it's beautiful, but it's not, it's not what I wanted. So I'm a little bit upset about that. Kind of the first dahlia you ever grew. <laughs> Which I do have, I have one here. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show them the, the very first dahlia that I grew that I hated. And I just, I hated dahlias the first time I grew them, which is such a weird thing to say, but that's another day, another story. This is Dahlia Evelyn, and I'm very sad that she's not um, open or newly open for you guys because she's a beautiful Dahlia. And you can't really see it on this one either. Kind of short, taking a long time to bloom this year. She's not a big producer for me. It w she wasn't last year either, but usually you'll just have little flicks of lavender on this one as well. So you can kind of pick up the theme. I'm trying to color plant them in a color, um, oh my gosh, like in a rainbow. Didn't quite work as I planned this year, but next year will be better. But anyways, Evelyn, good plant. So right over here, starting in bed number two, we have K.A. Kelty Rose, which I don't think this dolly needs a lot of an introduction. She's just absolutely perfect and beautiful. I love this one so much. New to me this year, and to the market actually, is K.A. Guava. She's very pretty, um, produces like crazy, nice, strong, sturdy plant. I love the stems on this one. This is K.A. Desert Rose. I don't have any open right now. I cut them recently, so I don't have any open, but I'll pop up a picture. 
This is just a, uh, a head that I'm saving for seeds, so that's why I, I left this on here. Now, this one right here is K.A. Peach, which is similar, a little bit similar to the Desert Rose, but again, on that peachier side, very pretty, long plant, long stems, very sturdy. I like her a lot. All right, right here is Skipley's Pot of Gold, and I almost passed her up, and I'm so happy that I didn't because she is beautiful. She just glows. She really just looks like there's like a, I was gonna say a 3D thing going on, but it is 3D technically, but it's just such a beautiful dahlia. One of the like little details that I like it, it has just these little flicks of yellow at the tips. And I think that's what's giving it that glowing effect. Beautiful dahlia. I have, I think I have three of them and I will definitely be dividing them and plant or growing more of these. Right here is Sweet Sand, which one of my favorite dahlias of all time. I think it's underrated and I don't know why, but she has beautiful dark purple stems, dark green leaves, would be a good contender for the landscape and just the most beautiful color variation. You have that yellow, you have that pink, you have that little bit of purple. It's just such a pretty dahlia. Right here I have Zunder, sorry, let me see. Zunder Mystery Fox. I'll see if I can pop up a picture. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna pop this little head off because it's ready to go anyway. You can't really see much on this one, but it has been producing really well for me. I like it. I like the color. It's nice and dark. Right next to it is Ferncliff Rusty, which is new to me. I like the size of it. I tend to stick to the to like the peach or warmer tone. So whenever I get a color like this and it's a good size, I tend to really go for it over and over and over. So I really love this one. Right over here we have polka, which so many people don't like polka and I don't get it because she's so fun and pretty and just happy. Like how can you not? She looks a little drunk. Well, <laughs> She does look a little drunk. She's not the best. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't grow them in the landscape, but I do. I do love love the actual flower. Okay, right over here is a bug. Hold on. Squish. I hate these bugs on my dahlias. I get so upset. It's a cucumber beetle. Okay. This is Chewy and it's, she's very popular, very beautiful. I believe it's a ball variety. It starts out purple and instead of that yellow, you get that orange variation. I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe seven of them. It produces really well, very reliable. I go for it all the time and it goes with everything. Right here is one called Crazy Legs, which I'm not crazy about because I don't like the yellow and red two-tone. That's just not my color palette. However, I like her for fall arrangements and she produces so many flowers. I can't deny it. Like the production power of this, of this Dahlia is actually incredible. And this is all one plant right here. It's massive. Yeah, this is all one plant. So we have several of these. Right over here is a mystery. And she kind of looks like high, high suntan, I think. I'm not sure. Let me know if you know this one. It's not Cornell bronze, I know that. And I know that because it's a little bit more purple. The backs of the petal before it blooms, it's a little bit more purple. So it's not... This is a mystery one. And here, here's what they all look like. I'm not sure. Here in front of you is one called Tyrell. Let me pop this on the floor. And I love this Dahlia so much. Blooms like crazy. It just has the most beautiful orange, yellow color. Just look at that Dahlia. Come on, this is so pretty. How can you not get excited? about something like this. Like, are you kidding me? Ah, that is so cool. Again, these are all chewy all the way here. And right here we have a dahlia called Beyond. And I love it. 
I don't love it as a cut flower. It loses its petals pretty quickly. It's the, the stems are kind of flimsy. If I'm going to use it as a cut flower, I like to use it in a bouquet that I'm not going to, it's not gonna require a lot of transport. The bees love this dahlia. This is a great dahlia for the landscape because the plant is kind of bushy at the bottom and then it has these long stems at the top. So it almost looks like a, a firework almost. So we have another one over here called Totally Tangerine. That's the same thing. Definitely think it'd be beautiful in the landscape. Right here is Purple Haze, which is new to me. I would not typically go for a color like this, but I actually love that deep tone. I love this plant because just look at it. There's so much interest going on with that dark foliage, that dark stem. To me, this is just screams Halloween, fall, like it just goes with those seasons. So definitely like her. Right over here, we have Dahlia Bacardi and it's actually a really beautiful Dahlia. And I love the deep wine tone that it has and that creamy yellow and the inside petals. It's just very pretty doesn't produce too many flowers for me, but it's probably because I didn't, I didn't pinch this one. I think that's what's going on, but it's a beautiful Dahlia. I will 100% continue growing her. We have Polka again. We have Bloomquest York, which very different from what I would typically go for again with that color, but my gosh, can you just, you can't deny that. That is just so stunning. Oh, it just looks like somebody took a paintbrush and just like started out with a deep color and then the color in off the paintbrush and that's what you're left with. Does that make sense? Beautiful Dahlia, super tall, super um, strong stems. I love Bloomquest York. And right next to her is Bloomquest Vivian, which look at this color. Look at that, you guys. How cool is that? Purple and white just pretty pretty dahlia right here is another mystery not sure who she is i think i might know who she is but i'm not sure starts out with a little bit of that purple lavender yellow ball blows all the way out to the back let me know if you have this one right over here we have caitlin's joy which is just a very pretty like lilac -y, dark purple Almost, there's almost some pink in it too. This is one of my favorite dahlias too, probably in my top 10. Good producer, beautiful color, beautiful in arrangements, and I don't know, there's nothing bad to say about her. Right here we have Bracken Rose, which is probably, it's a favorite, I think, in the dahlia community. She's been around, she's very pretty. Bracken Rose, a lot of purple, pink, and then more of that dusty yellow cream on the outside as the petals ages. I like it because it has dark stems and I like the bloom size. I think we're probably at about two to three inches across. So it's a very good size dahlia and works well with everything. Not everything, but almost everything. I like this one a lot. So in our third bed is where we start really like, uh-oh, there's a lot that don't look similar to what I ordered. We have this really pretty yellow one. I'm not sure what this is. It's not a true yellow because if it like, how do I say this? If it was like a highlighter yellow, I would have pulled it out immediately, but it starts out with actually just a touch of a tanner peach color in the center. And then it opens up to a little bit more of that yellow, but it's beautiful. It's a beautiful Dahlia. I want to know what she is because I want to divide her and have more. Right here is Oret, oh, I think it's Oretti Adele. I'll put the name on the screen because I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Very interesting. I wasn't drawn to her at first when I ordered it, but when I saw it bloom, I was like, okay, I get it. It's a very popular Dahlia and it just has yellow with that pink lavender on the outside. Not producing too many, but I like her. Right here is Wen's New Pastel and it's a beautiful Dahlia. It's more on the yellow side, but the underside has just strokes of pink. And it's just so beautiful and lovely and reminds me of a sunset. We have Joey Linda, which again is a very popular one, just a beautiful, strong 
producer of Adali. I think a lot of people are familiar with this one. Right over here, we have Bracken Sarah. And just look at that. I think this one is also pretty popular. A lot of pink and yellow to this one. I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it, but I am obsessed with it. Here is a funny situation because these are two dahlias. Well, these are two varieties that get confused a lot. And I, I, I hope that this is correct, but maybe you have some in your garden and you can identify them better. But we have two Castle Drive and we have Coriali or Corial, Corelli, sorry. And for a long time, people were selling them in reverse and they were being mislabeled. I think I've labeled them correctly. However, there was kind of a mishmash situation when I was planting. So let me know what you think. But if you can see, look at this one, how it has a little bit more purple and yellow. So this is why I think this is Corelli. While this one is a little bit more pink. And this is why I think it's Castle Drive. I'm not 100% sure, but I, I hope I'm correct. This one is supposed to be Darcy, but it does not look like Darcy to me. Darcy to me is a little bit more yellow. This is a little bit more of a dusty pink. It almost looks like Valley Tawny, but it's short. So I don't know. And I really want to know because this is probably my favorite top five dahlias that I'm seeing with my eyes right now. Love, love this one. Here's another mystery one that I'm not sure who, who she is, but she's very pretty, kind of a deeper orange, ages to be a little bit more yellow. The bloom size are about three inches. This is what she starts out as. Beautiful, but I just don't have a tag for this one. I'm not sure. I'm kind of bummed out because I like it. This here is Venus, which is such a beautiful dahlia. Look at that stunner. First year growing it, I had a hard time finding it. I'm happy I secured it. And this is one of the dahlias that it, it took to cuttings really well. I took a lot of cuttings and all of the cuttings did super well for me. I'm super thrilled about it. This is one of the a dahlia that I would consider planting out in the landscape because again, it has that effect of the plant is a little bit bushier on the center, but it shoots out these beautiful long stem flowers. And just look at how big that is. It's such a beautiful dahlia. I just, oh, I can't get enough of this one. Right over here is orange globe. These two are an orange globe and they're just such beautiful, beautiful dahlias. I love these so much. I can't wait to cut into these and start using them in arrangements. They're kind of late this year, but beautiful color starts out kind of a darker dusty pink and then it, as it ages it gets a little bit lighter i was so excited about this one it's kind of hard to get but i'm uh, i'm so happy that i got two right over here is i think it's barbara domino i'm gonna put the name up on the screen for you guys for this one but let me just turn her a little bit look at that beauty she absolutely glows in the garden, produces a lot of flowers. I definitely want more of her, but it's so delicate and just so pretty. It has that kind of green center and I love it. Right over here we have pink pearl and just the cutest, most delicate, girly flower. It doesn't look like when you're looking right at it, it's pretty, but when you look at the side is really when you get to see those just kind of like a, a very light, light lavender petals on the inside. And it's just such a delicate flower. I love this one. Right next to her is Valley Rust Bucket. Small blooms, but high impact. A lot of color, kind of that burnt orange color on the underside. And it's just such a pretty, pretty dolly. I like this one a lot. Right next to it is High Sue Tan or Sun Tan. This one right here, which is pretty popular. I don't know, it's just like a very nice orange. You can see it. I have several of them over here. Beautiful ball variety. This one's not too hard to get. A lot of people, it used to be very popular back in the day, um, but now it's readily available. Here is Amber Queen. She's small, but she's mighty. Look at that, look at that cutie. 
I just love all of the symmetry. I love symmetry so much. And this just has the like most symmetrical shape to it. It's small, but look at all of the blooms that it has. This is all one plant and it's absolutely beautiful. Right next to her is Cornell Bronze, which again, it used to just be such a popular variety and it's kind of died back a little bit, but it's still, I don't know, it's still one of my favorites anyway. I like this one a lot. Right over here we have Pinhill Dark Monarch. She's not in full bloom yet, but it's a beautiful dinner plate variety. It gets very tall. I don't use this in arrangements ever. If I were, I would probably cut it at this stage right here, not when it's more open because it's just gonna get bigger and bigger. I like it or I grow it because I just love how it attracts me back here. Like I just see it and it just, bloop, my eyes immediately go to it. So this is a beautiful variety. This is totally tangerine down here. And this is one of the dahlias I highly recommend for the landscape, especially if you just do a hedge of them that would be so stunning. This is how it starts out with. This is how it ages. And the bees, oh, the bees love, love that one. Right over here, we have Wine-Eyed Susan, beautiful Dahlia. It starts out with that deep, dark center and then ages to a little bit of that light yellow. Right here is Rose, I'm sorry, Terracotta. Yeah, isn't that pretty? You didn't notice this one, did you? Yeah, very pretty Dahlia. I like the shape, I like the stem. This is what it starts out with. And then as it ages, it just opens up and becomes even more frilly, just like that. I'm pretty sure this one is another Omega that got that snuck in here, but I wanna see how it opens up a little bit more before I confirm. And right over here, we have Honeydew, which doesn't seem special through the pictures but when you see this in person there's so much variation in the colors there's yellow there's orange there's flicks of pink and it glows and it's so pretty here's one where it's like a little bit more yellow oops where this one to me has a little bit more orange in it isn't that pretty this is i think is this your favorite dahlia no no who's your favorite they're all my favorite. <laughs> that was a trick question. All right, let's go on to the last bed. Here we have Irish D. Porter, and just look at that cutie. Are you kidding me? Isn't this the cutest little Dahlia ever? I love this one. She's new to me this year. Very small, probably one to two inches across. Kind of white, kind of like a creamy white with that. Uh, pink center, very light. I love this one. We have Rose Toscano right over here, which is actually pulling in a little bit more of a peachy hue than I anticipated, but it's still so pretty. Right next to you is, again, Irish Ruffles, which if you look at it, maybe this one is probably the best. Do you see how there's just ever so slightly, just like a touch of color. I expected that to be more pronounced and it's not. So it's just very white. I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue observing it and see what it does, but not, not super thrilled, but maybe, maybe it was mislabeled. These are not blooming. Oh, what? Oh, yeah. Do you guys see that bee in there? We got a bee butt. How cute, how cute are those? Uh, these are not blooming, so I won't go into them. We have WBS Saffron over here, which is so pretty. I was shocked that I would go for that, but this is how it starts out with, but this is how it ages. This is where I like it. I'm not a fan of that yellow, but I am a fan of that situation right there. We have another Omega over here. Here is another one that is nameless according to my inventory. Orange with that pink underside, it kind of looks, hmm, it kind of looks like another variety, but I'm not, I need to confirm. I need to cut them and put them next to each other to see how, how they look. And I do wanna say, if you ever run into a situation like me where you're not sure <laughs> the variety, I always start out by looking at the color 
I look at the form, so I, I check to see if it's a ball, if it's a formal decorative, if it's a decorative, if it's the dinner plate, colorette, etc. And then I start looking at the size, so the height of the plant, and then I move to the leaf shape and then the color. So it takes a little bit of investigating. And when you look at pictures online, I always recommend going to multiple sources because these dahlias, they just look different and in different lighting and different temperatures. A lot of them, like one that might be a little bit more lavender for you, might be a little bit more yellow for me, kind of like cinder rose. So you have to kind of, you know, you kind of have to do like a little bit of digging and it takes a little bit of investigating, but it's worth it once you, you know their name. Right over here is Crazy Love. And this was the very first dahlia I grew and I hated it. And I hated it because I, <laughs> I was just expecting something different. And what happened was every dahlia that I bought was the same variety. So I think there was an issue with labeling and I think I only bought like six at that time but i was just like really this is it like that's the hype around dahlias but now that i look at it when i look at it i do appreciate it and i think it's a beautiful dahlia it's not one that i am drawn to immediately in the beginning but that second year when i tried them again that's when i saw cafe Olay and i was like mm, i'm hooked and there was no turning back so i will always grow at least one just to pay homage to <laughs> to my dislike for them the very first year and yeah right here is copper boy and it's not blooming yet but i i recommend you checking out photos of this one because it's very pretty just that deep deep orange i'm really into like dark oranges this season i don't know if it's just the fall or what it is i'm not sure about this one it kind of looks like nick singer I definitely did not order this one, but I'm going to see what it does the more it opens. It's probably not one that I'll keep as the cut flower though. I may put it in the landscape, but it's not one that I will, I will keep in here. We have several Cafe Olay, which she is one of my favorites. She was my favorite for the longest time. And then of course there's just new contenders now. <laughs> But Cafe Ole will remain in my top five. I just think it's such a beautiful flower. We have more repeats of ones that you guys already saw here. This one is very interesting because the tag on it said Royal King. And I bought this at the Northwest Flower Garden Show. And that's all the tag said. Royal King Dahlia. It's supposed to be a decorative. I cannot find anything to match this Dahlia. <laughs> So I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. All I do know is it's a showstopper. It stops me in my track. I will, I do want to continue growing it just because that color is so stunning, but I'm having a hard time believe that this is the actual name of this one. Let me know if you know this variety and if so, what is the name of it? Right here is an unknown. It kind of looks like uh, wine eye gel however it's a lot smaller so I'm not too sure about this one it's probably probably about three inches so here's one that's just starting to open and here's one that's open but do you see how it's more white than yellow as it ages so that's why I'm a little bit confused about this one I think this one is going to be Rayanne's peach if I'm not mistaken but it's not open so I can't show that to you we have more Cafe Olay, and then right over here we have a la mode, which is cool, but not my favorite. I like how the tips are white. I like it like this at this stage. This is probably where I would pick it if I were going to design with it. The more it opens, just, I don't know, I don't, I'm not a huge, huge fan of that two-tone. This one is interesting. Look at that, same flower very different blooms and dahlias often will do this so don't don't be don't be worried if, if yours are doing this and down here we have peaches and cream and there are some other varieties here that i absolutely cannot wait to see and i want to share those with you guys as soon as they do bloom all right guys well that will be the end of today's tour i could probably continue talking about them 
a lot longer. So I don't even know how long this video is going to be, but hopefully not too much. And I just really wanted to focus on showing you all of the varieties that I have now. There are definitely some that I'm really excited about, like Suncrest, Hamilton Lillian. Um, gosh, there's just so many that haven't bloomed yet that I'm just like patiently waiting for them to bloom and we'll I'll do some sort of video with those and to just show you guys but at least this will give you an idea of all of the varieties that I have right now and maybe some are ones that you want to order and hopefully you got a up close shot of those today if you have any questions let me know but yeah I I'm just trying to be very patient I'm being patient because we, there's still so many that haven't done anything and I'm just hoping that they bloom before the end of the season. So uh, I'm crossing my fingers and yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today in my garden and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.